Hello, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today uh, on this webinar. Uh, we will wait for five more minutes and then start with the webinar for the larger group of people. Thanks. Hi, good morning and afternoon everyone. So thank you for your time in attending the session. So um, as mentioned by Rupanj earlier, we will be commencing our webinar in three minutes time. So it will be the local time at 1.35 p.m. So we'll probably wait for about maybe three more minutes for the rest of the attendees to join and then Rupanj will be able to share with you our insights. Hello and welcome everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you all of you for taking your time to join us today. Uh, my name is Rupanj and I head business development for Trust2 India. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank uh, IHM Rangabad for giving us this opportunity uh, you know, to collaborate with them for this webinar. 
today in this master class we will be talking about online reputation management so that you can learn about the various tools and features hotels are using nowadays to leverage their online presence i'm sure that by end of this session you will be feeling uh, ridiculously confident about taking your properties online presence to the next level and garner knowledge about you know the various trends of online marketing to make sure that we are helping you as best as we can on the topic we have a chat box to source your questions feel free to drop questions on the topic or share your struggles and experiences we will be answering your questions by the end of the session for the students who are enjoying the sessions together a moderator can collect the questions and post it on their behalf we would also be recording this webinar so please feel free to reach out to us uh, in case you need a copy of the recording great then uh, uh, we move on to the next slide now Firstly, I would like to introduce uh, to you my fellow colleagues and the speakers for today's event. Uh, we've got Nina Chen, who is business development manage, manage, manager for uh, Trust You, based out of Taiwan. Uh, that's me, Rupanj. Uh, I'm based out of India. Nina, I'm sorry. Uh, you can probably say a hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Rupanj, for introducing me. Great. Uh, we've also got Eric Tan, uh, who is senior client success manager, APAC. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Great. Uh, we move on to the next slide. The next slide talks about the agenda of today's program. So the agenda is pretty basic and simple. Uh, we would be learning about Trust You and how we empower hoteliers to listen to their guests. Then uh, we would also show you the data, which kind of talks about the trends in the APAC region, especially after the pandemic has hit us. You know how are trends changing? What are the travelers looking forward to? You know, post the pandemic. We also have a very interesting case study about the Taj Hotels and what Taj Hotels has gained uh, from the online reputation management system. And then uh, the forum will be open for questions and answers after that. Great. Uh, we move on to the next slide now. So a little bit about the company. Uh, Trust You was formed in 2008 uh, with a simple idea, which is making user-generated feedback accessible and understandable. Right now, we operate out of five offices in Europe, US, and Asia, with our headquarters being in Munich. We make sure that we meet the local and regional requirements of our clients and partners while taking a global approach to our products, mindset, and company vision. We as a company, in fact, firmly believe that listening is listening to feedback is the key to success. We take data and we turn it into story that every can, everyone can read, understand, and use to make better decisions in life. In 26 languages worldwide, uh, we help companies to listen to what their customers have to say with dedication and passion every day. So this is uh, just about the company and what we do. Uh, we move on to the next slide now, where I will be just giving you some facts and figures about the company. So as you can see here, uh, we are not ranked number one on Hotel Tech Report. Uh, we've got 100 thousand plus customers in more than 100 plus countries with 7 million guest sentiments detected daily. We cover approximately 92% of the global hotel database and aggregate around 90% of the daily hotel reviews. 97 sources in terms of OTAs and review sites are under our umbrella. Uh, moving on to the next slide. This is just a glimpse of the clients who actually rely on us. So in terms of data, the companies who rely on us for data we've got the big players like Bing, google hotels.com holiday the check we've got hotel we've got sitemindr dh oracle hospitality in terms of the brand which we're working you know at this point of time there's a car there's bnb there is motel one there's oyo there's redline hotels shangri-la taj sonesta and Wyndham. so these are a couple of our partners moving on to uh, the next slide this actually will give you a brief idea about you know what we do as a company and how do we help hotels and hoteliers so if you see uh, the guest journey while staying at a hotel is primarily divided into three parts you know one is the booking phase then comes the on-site phase and then the post stay phase booking stage is the phase you know when you haven't actually decided on a hotel and you're still contemplating which hotel to book so we in the booking phase we've got review widgets where travelers can have a look at the reviews posted about your property, which is the crucial factor these days before choosing a property to stay. Then you come 
to the pre stay survey which is again in the booking phase wherein if someone has booked a hotel we help properties to send a pre survey to their guests which help uh, them to deep dive in, dive into guest profile and the property comes to know about their preferences so this is actually a survey which you can fill before even checking into the hotel which is beneficial both for the guest as well as for the hotel because there's a lot of information being shared then comes the on site phase which is basically what all methods and measures you can use on the property you know on the site of your property to communicate with the guest for example you know before by logging into the wifi you know you can ask the guest to kind of fill a feedback or a survey you know then you can place qr codes at at various public places and room which you can just scan and address your issues through a live chat feature on our platform there is a messaging feature which helps you to stay connected with the guest with by using various platforms like you know uh, sms wechat and whatsapp then come a couple of back end features like team chat and task manager then the last page which is the post stay survey uh, this is like a survey after the guest has checked out which normally a lot of hotels do we also help with review analytics which actually helps you find out sentiment through semantic analytics to actually find out how services can be improved in a hotel all these features will be explained in details in the next couple of slides great uh, we move on to the next slide so as we know uh, we were hit by the pandemic in 2020 and in fact over the last decade the apac region was one of the most prominent contributors of global travel combining beautiful scenery with cultural heritage it provided countless op options in terms of travel experiences both for international and domestic visitors unfortunately as mentioned before the pandemic slowed down significantly everything related to travel being the first region hit by covid-19 apac saw the biggest decline in terms of international travel both in 2020 and 2021 this is why we think 2022 is a year full of expectations both for hoteliers and travelers uh, in this year the word that would best describe you know people who would like to travel is meaningful you know people want to create unforgettable moments because they've not traveled since such a long period of time they want to visit those long desired places and you know have the most uh, out of the box trip you know which they kind of long for the past two years in this unpredictable situation it is in the hands of the apac hoteliers to ensure that you know those who are choosing to travel are feeling safe peaceful and welcome to relax from the worldwide uncertainty so there are kind of three main opportunities that the regional industry can focus on in order to create a good guest experience a uh, number one of uh, what we personally feel is you know kind of emphasize on health and safety regulations second could be you know use of technology enabled communication to solve problems on the go and turn negative reviews into positive ones and the third would and the most important one is you know to keep things personal creating genuine connections with guests which ultimately help differentiate between good and exceptional service the slides after this offers us perspective of how travel in 2021 evolved in the impact region so a couple of trends which we saw uh, you know in 2021 was first of all the market size apac was the third lar largest market travel at a global level based on international tra traveler arrivals sorry market growth apac was the global leader in terms of the travel sector and contributed to a regional gdp of around 36% the global average was around 30% compared to 2020 a similar growth is kind of expected for 2022 in terms of the economic impact that the region had the total number of global tourists was around 20.9 million which was a 65% decrease compared to 2020 domestic travel has now kind of balanced the situation with an estimate of 49% growth at the end of 2021 and a year and year rise of more than quarter estimated for 2022 we will move on to the next slide after this so this is how the 2021 apac traveler profile looked like you know because a lot has changed after the pandemic so a person who is tra who traveled in 2021 considered health and safety measures as the most important factor while choosing economic and accommodation he spent he or she spent more time planning and booking a trip 
they preferred longer trips you know they focused on how to travel more than when to travel they looked for meaningful unforgettable experiences while traveling in terms of the travel spend the domestic travel spend was crucial to the 2021 recovery the growth was estimated at 49% in 2020 we move on to the next slide just to continue on the trends uh, in terms of a couple of leaders which helped with apac recovery china china was the leader of apac recovery china registered a growth of 60% for the travel sector in comparison to 2021 the recovery process started as early as september 2020 due to a high number of promotional packages aimed at encouraging domestic travelers then south korea south korea was the country with the highest number of population traveling outside the country high vaccination rates contributed to this trend then the great doubt doors which is a very generic term you know which talks about you know scene, scenic places which became a very dominant trend for the apac travelers nature scenery is will and is as we are seeing right now are popular in 2022 as well in china alone the booking for nature related attractions have increased by around 265% in the first 6 months of 2021 so this was a bit about how you know we the trends changed in the apac region in 2021 these are view 2020 uh we move on to the next slide now so these are a couple of scores which we saw in 2020 which kind of influenced a person's you know uh, booking uh, interest for booking a hotel the top 3 positive impact scores which kind of uh, you know helped a hotel get bookings was number one service you know the hotels which got top marked top marks on service on in their reviews and other platforms people preferred it more than you know hotels which have a lower rating of service then obviously the hotel the brand by hotel i mean the brand then the location the location was also a very important factor for people to kind of choose the property they want to stay at in to- talking about the negative impact scores uh, wifi was number one you know it's a very crucial element in today's world especially you know where i i can personally say that for some people food and food is more important than wifi because it's become so important currently with this staycation and work from home model the room room also plays very important role and played an important role in 2020 in you know kind of determining whether you want to book that hotel or not and number third is price especially when it comes to the indian market you know people are very very price sensitive so that also had a major impact on the decision making we move on uh, to the next slide which will be taken over by my colleague neena So Nina will just explain you how our platform works and give you a straight case study about our hotel. Nina, over to you. All right, thank you so much, Rupansh. And uh, once again, hello everyone. I'm Nina, and uh, I'm happy. It's my pleasure to be here uh, to share some more information about Tresu with you all. Um, so since Rupansh already covered uh, a little bit of background about Tresu. and also some interesting trends about uh, apac recovery right now uh, i guess you might be wondering so how exactly uh, what it look like uh, if i'm using a platform a reputation management tool like trust you so later in my part i will uh, help this part and then show you some uh, features and some uh, examples that our hotels how they use our platform So next let's go to uh the user journey first once again. Uh I want to highlight this part because uh it's crucial for us to uh bear in mind and then later when we look into those features it will make a lot more sense. So uh we all travel um, at some points like our uh, conscious mentions uh we've been more careful so at the moment we are start searching our hotels we are looking at all the reviews and making sure it's a safe hotel it's clean then uh the guest journey starts so that's where uh the yellow part comes in and then goes to when they check in and experience your service and uh get to know if they like your hotel and then when they check out perhaps you invite them for fill out 
a survey, or maybe they go to a public website to leave their review, then eventually that becomes some data that you can use. So this is where we are going to start the reputation management part. So let's move to the next one. Here, uh, hotel analytics. This is one of our core products that will show you, uh, for example, you can see here in this dashboard, if you are a single hotel, when you sign in, you will see a dashboard like this. All these small square interest you, we call them uh, tiles. So in this tiles, you are able to review and analyze your data in different perspectives. So it's the overall score, or maybe you have analyzed it with different sentiments, you will be able to track your team uh, if they are actively response to your clients, what are the languages, or even if you are, let's say you are a head of uh, housekeeping, you might have, you want to have an individual view, like a separate tile to tell you how's my team performing. Or for example, you will see that uh, maybe you can manage that in a single source view. Like if we very care about uh, booking.com, then I can have an individual view of booking.com. So all this uh, information in one dashboard, you can uh, always come to this uh, small icon on the upper right side, the calendar view to choose different time frame. So up to uh, 24 months previously, then uh, you can track all your data and feel free to even customize. For example, if you want to compare uh, your performance this summer versus last summer, you can uh, use your own preferred time period. Then now let's take overall score uh, as an example in our next slide. So when you click all these small squares, every uh, single one of them will bring you even more data. So take this one as an example. Then uh, when you click that, you will see a drop down of all the sources list. So you don't have to go out and then to see all the different reviews in different place. We already put that together and then show you uh, how's your performance in booking.com, in Google, and how's the trend look like, are you getting more reviews or its entire trend is dropping? Or uh, furthermore, you can also see the distribution. So let's take an example. Um, if, for example, you already invest quite a lot in your official website, then probably you want people to search you and then uh, eventually book through your website. However, if you find, I actually don't have enough reviews in Google. Or if you zoom in, you find out, oh no, I actually have some pretty bad review on Google, then most likely your potential client will experience the similar thing. So they might wondering also the same, then uh, your investment in your website probably goes uh, a little bit waste. So that's somehow, uh, that's the ways that how our hotels help themselves to analyze uh, the trends and then the distribution, all those reviews from different channels. So move on to the next, we will see the next part. If you're not a single hotel, if you are managing a lot of hotels at once, then we also have our enterprise accounts. So in enterprise account, you're allowed to review and manage your team in different, let's say different brands or uh, different areas. We put that into all different uh, portfolios. And then also you can see the charts will give you a very quick view and you will be able to analyze if, for example, all those uh, hotels, if they have good overall score and then also respond to the client very well. Then uh, this one, uh, if you are managing a lot of uh, hotels and to check their performance from a corporate office view, then this account will be very powerful for you to access this as an enterprise user. Then now let's go to the next one. Not only when we are tracking all our own data, I think one very important view is that uh, we also want to know how uh, our competitor are doing in the market. So you will see this one as a separate tab here called uh, competitors. Then similarly, those we will show you will get the data from those competitors that you choose into one place as well. Then uh, we go to different channels or uh, analyze it in different like overall score or performance. So here you might notice already that the 
numbers here is actually showing something like one point something or zero point something. So let me explain a little bit more. This part we call that comp index in TrustU. So it's very easy to understand. You just see uh, the number one as a benchmark. Uh, for example, you see this little tile shows Google. It says 1.1, meaning that uh, in this uh, in this source that you are actually performing better than uh, the rest of the competitors. So similarly, uh, when it comes to uh, Booking.com, it shows zero point uh, nine four, and then also the color is red. So this one is showing you that you are actually a little bit behind in this uh, in this source. So when you click through, you will also see a lot more detail in there. So this is just an example for you to know that when you compare yourself with the competitors, this is where you can manage all those data. And let's go to the next, please. So now, since we already know uh, ourselves from the review data, and also we benchmark with our competitors, you might wondering then, how am I going to take all this into actions? So the next part, we are going to talk a, bit, a little bit more about uh, inbox. So this inbox is where uh, we put all your reviews in one place and it looks just like your email inbox. However, you will have a lot more filters that here, for example, I open one as an example, you can easily filter out those reviews that you maybe missed or didn't respond on several, on several uh, channels, or you can even uh, filter that out, maybe find the negative ones or the ones with lower scores. So that way you don't have to go back onto all the different sites and looking for uh, any negative reviews that you forget to respond maybe in the past uh, six, month, uh, six months ago or three months ago. So with all this uh, filter, you will be able to find the exactly data that you want to see. So for example, when you click on that, and then you will see the review detail on the site, then for the next one, we're going to act on that. So let's move to the next slide. So when you see a bad review, and perhaps you are seeing, oh, there are actually something captured, uh, good things or bad things. So in one review, Generally, people will say multiple things, and then sometimes we need a different department to act on the same review. So in here, you see we are able to help you with a quick action around this. You can easily add the task on the site and then put that, assign that into a certain department or to a specific colleague that you want to assign, and then set the due date click save, and then assign uh, this new task to uh, the, design the assigned department. Then uh, our, in our system, then we'll help you to track all these uh, tasks. Then you will be able to track it with their status if your team is actually working on it. So apart from the tasks, then next slide, we will see uh, goals. So similarly, if we have all those tests that we've been working on, we don't have to come back and forth and communicating with, it, uh, with everyone all the time. We can easily just set up goals for uh, all, the, all the departments. For example, some of the departments, uh, maybe they want to measure their KPI uh, with a response rate, uh, with maybe overall score, or all these different, uh, different review, uh, review data then same thing you can add a goal in our platform then uh, we will help you to track the status to see if those uh, if those uh, goals are have been taken care of by different things so now let's go to the next part so after all the reviews that we uh, be able to re uh, to analyze and then also act on to reply that we are also talking about the surveys which will be the ways that the hotel can be a bit more even more proactive to reply to the client to to the guests so in this part you can see the screenshot on the at the bottom that uh, here in TrustU, we provide multiple types of reviews. So maybe you have uh, cafes, you have different restaurant outlets in your hotel, 
then uh, we are able to provide you a different type of survey. Or even if you want to track specifically for uh, the mice survey, then uh, you can also use that to measure uh, your event performance. So in this part later, I will talk a bit more on on-site survey, post-day survey, and then eventually how you can use those surveys uh, to help you uh, in, uh, to help you uh, improve their booking experience. So let's go to the next part. So the first on-site survey is uh, the part when people still staying in with you. So when they are checking in the hotel, a lot of people they starting to connect Wi-Fi. So one way of distribute this uh, so-called on-site survey is a simpler way when they trying to connect, we will bring them to a landing page and say a very short, uh, give them a very uh, short survey and asking about how's their uh, experience so far, uh, anything we can improve, something like that. And similar ways, it can become a QR code. So maybe you want to put that uh, in the cafe, in front of elevator, or just print it out, uh, uh, put them in the room or somewhere you think that guests will be easy to access them. So with this one, uh, they will have a quick, uh, you will start the conversation quickly with your, uh, your guests. And then for them to give you feedback, maybe once they check in, they figure out, oh, they want to, they want to change room and they have other uh, specific requirements that they need your help. So they will be able to respond to you right away. So actually with our own data, it shows that with on-site survey, it actually will 10 times more likely the people at the guests when they check out, they will give you uh, even more feedback and also increase the overall guest satisfaction. That means if you start communicating when they still in the in your hotel and then you fix their problems, then later it will lead you to a higher satisfaction rate. So let's move to the next one. So what happened if uh, a guest that sends you a request, maybe uh, they're saying, oh, I need more um, two bottle of water or I need uh, more pillows in my room, some all this type of uh, request. Uh, when, when they send out the survey, what happens in the hotel end is that they will receive a browser notification or if their staff, they download a Trustio app, then they will receive a notification where it shows, oh, room one, two, three, there is one query coming in, the request coming in, they are requesting for something. And when you see this uh, orange part, those are internal notes. So it shows that if I receive something from uh, one room from one guest, then I will be easily to just take my other colleagues, say, hey, Rupanj, can you help me to deliver this and that to room one, two, three, please? Then I send out this and my colleagues, maybe he's on the phone and then he's received this notification, he will be able to act on immediately. So this is a place where uh, we put all the communication together from uh, the guest side and also from our own colleague and then all the departments we can co-work together in here. And even more, you can put some small notes like uh, it's a VIP guest. So when you off your shift and the next uh, colleague coming in to support, they will also be able to see what are those um, important clients or specific requests they need to be very uh, uh, taken care of. So let's move to the next one. So like we mentioned, uh, once we already started the conversation with uh, the, the guests when they are staying with us, when they check out, uh, when they receive your post-stay survey, they won't feel like very awkward. They're already very used to that you reach out to them, proactive asking them uh, to show them that you really care about their experience. So here in this screenshot, you will see a sample survey of our post-stay survey. And uh, the banner, and the logo, all these ones, uh, even the color in the back, you can customize to your own. You can change to your hotel and change to different welcome, welcome message. And with support multiple language that you can change. So when the guests receive, they can choose their preferred language to answer. And then a very important part about our post-state survey 
is that we are able to help to push those guest feedback to the public sites like Google or TripAdvisor. So if you see this screenshot on the right, then you will see there's a tick box. When I, as a guest, for example, when I uh, fill out this survey and then uh, send it out, then uh, they will help me to boost my uh, reviews in the public sites. Then let's go to the next one, see how it looks like in our end. So when we send out those surveys, uh, of course, when we receive all the feedbacks, we also need to keep ourselves on track to see how exactly people feeling if they like our service after checkout, and also uh, to track our conversion rate. If we send out uh, 100 emails, and then how many of them will eventually convert uh, into a useful feedback? And also how many of them become a Google pushed uh, reviews in the end? So those are the uh, crucial parts that we need to track as well after we send out the survey. Then now let's go to the next one. Okay, so once we have all the details and then we send out uh, the survey to the guest, there's the one more thing that we need to leverage all these reviews. So not only we collect all those feedbacks and keep that to ourselves, it's also important to share that to the world because I mean, your potential clients, they will also be browsing your website, they'll be searching, as we mentioned in the very beginning, that the very beginning of user journey, they try to see what other people say about this hotel. So take this one as an example, some of our clients, they uh, tend to put a separate tab where it shows guest review on their official website. So when uh, they maybe have some campaigns or maybe they have uh, emails that to lead uh, the client open their, uh, their official website, and then they will have all the information all at once. They check in the price and check if they like the room and how does it look in the rest of the location details. And of course, very important, how's the guest review? So if I'm traveling with family, I also want to see if the rest of the uh, family guests there, are they saying good things about this, uh, about this hotel? So when they finally finish up uh, the guest review, uh, then it will encourage them directly book from their website. So here you can see some uh, status that we get from uh, our hotel partners. They actually increase their web traffic by uh, 10%, such as NH hotels. And then also the park hotels, they also get 35% uh, 35, 35 more revenue uh, and then drive more direct bookings. So those are the ways that, uh, as we said, we form that as an entire circle, as an entire user journey to help them, uh, to help our guests uh, to improve their service along the entire journey. So next one, let's go to have a little bit more uh, example about uh, our, our, uh, part, uh, our hotel clients, Tosh. So in this part, uh, let's go to the next slide, please. We take this as an example because I also want to highlight some part of uh, our post sell service. In TrustU, we actually really uh, focus on how we can support our clients and provide all the uh, service that we could uh, help them to analyze and get most benefit from our platform. So for example, uh, we have key account managers that they actually dedicate to those guest uh, yearly reviews or business reviews. So make sure that uh, if it's a big chain, then maybe they have all these different departments and uh, all the staff they need to give training to and to make sure they, every one of them knows how to leverage TrustU platform. So that's why we take this very iconic brand uh, especially in India, to show you how we can work very closely together with them. So now let's move on the next one. Um, I want to start with uh, this, um, this sentence. I think it's uh, quite powerful that uh, it says that news uh, should travel faster than good news to ensure that our guests and colleagues experience touchness with, uh, with that we are known for. So uh, I think this shows a uh, very detail about what we mentioned earlier, that the hotel actually takes very, uh, take care of 
uh, their guest experience. So not only focusing on the uh, what people saying they're good, also they are very care about if uh, if those bad reviews, if those area of improvement, they are actually uh, having any uh, heavy any influence on that. So let's go to the next one. So here is the ways that uh, you can see how they take those approaches. So from the left side, uh, the analyze part is where we mentioned earlier uh, when we talk about the analytics that uh, we need to actually look very detailed into what we are doing great and what we are not doing, uh, not what we need to improve, not only by ourselves, but also benchmark with our competitors. And then secondly, uh, the also very important to get all the, uh, to collect more feedback as we can. So that's why we, why we are saying uh, earlier on when uh, the hotels, they're staying with you, you try to reach them out with your onsite survey. And when they check out, they'll try to get a lot more feedback with their post-day survey. So with those ones, I think the last point is uh, my personal favorite that is to consistently repeat those right actions. So I think that's a very crucial part that everyone wants to have change, but it doesn't happen overnight. So it does. It really takes some effort to repeat and look into the data and then form that into action. So eventually, gradually, that will uh, improve your guest satisfaction. So let's move on to the next. And then here, uh, using the, da uh, the data to become a uh, the ways that they can actually making a decision where in all the areas, including uh, checking their rooms, their location, facilities, f &B, all these parts uh, they are working on, they will be able to see that if uh, those things they are offering, if the guests are actually satisfied with that. So uh, they are collecting those review data uh, over 350 sources. Uh, with all the review data that we are helping our guests to uh, collect, just like uh, Rupanch has exp explained earlier in the opening, that we actually cover the global data. So not only the regional ones, we also help that uh, bigger hotel chains uh, to cover all the reviews uh, around the world. And then uh, later also boost a lot more user reviews through the websites and then also through the surveys that we mentioned to collect more feedback and then eventually push that into the public site like Google or Booking.com, uh, sorry, or TripAdvisor. So with that said, uh, let's move on to the next one. So for the next one, uh, I think we will also show you about uh, the final score that right now we are presenting here. It says profession uh, as a performance score of 94. So uh, here with the case uh, study with Tush, so uh, this one is actually that uh, using our platform, you can have the scores, uh, like we mentioned earlier, the performance or the overall score that help you to measure your online reputation. Uh, not only with yourself, but also with other competitors in the market. So throughout this one, when you gradually improving uh, your reviews, then uh, eventually will help you to achieve more uh, satisfaction. So this one is what we want to highlight as a successful case study with Tush. Of course, that uh, it contains a lot of uh, uh, workshop and also uh, trainings that conducted by our key account managers that we also helping helping them uh, to have more to analyze more insight uh, from different time frame and then also from the apart from our key account managers we also have our customer success team so here in APAC team that uh, we also have the two different ways to support our clients and the, our customer success team they will be able to help our guests to, uh, for example, to handle their like uh, uh, connecting issues or if they have any queries coming in in different uh, logging issues, for example, those technical parts then uh, we'll be supporting also from our customer service team. So with that said, uh, we want to make sure that uh, 
not only we helping our guests uh, in to improve their guest experience, we also by ourselves we also want to make sure that after our uh, clients are working with us, we ensure that we can help them along the way to make sure that they can get the most benefit from our platform as well. So now let's move on to the next, please. So uh, for those parts that will be uh, bring us to the end of my presentation, then now I think we still have some time for us to talk a little bit more about our Q&A. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to leave that uh, in the chat box or you can directly ask us. So thank you for the question. All right, so thank you to Rupanj and Nina for the wonderful insights of the trends in APEC and also to share on the touch case studies and also to elaborate more on our product functionalities. So now is the time for you to actually ask some questions if you have um, simply just by writing your questions onto the chat box or right now I will be proceeding to unmute the participants so that you can just uh, unmute yourself and then you can start to ask any questions and uh, we will do our best to answer your questions accordingly. So probably we just give about one to two minutes. If you prefer to uh, type it out and just feel free to comment on the chat box or you can unmute yourself. Good morning. Am I audible? Hi. Hi. Hello. My name is Hiri Pereira and I am a five year student with Model Manager. You mentioned that uh, Wi Fi and service are major factors in affecting positive, negative and positive reviews. So, how often do these factors change? Your um, I didn't really uh, get your questions. Your I, think that, I think that you are mentioning about Wi Fi, right? Yes. So you had mentioned that uh, Wi-Fi and service are key contributors to negative and positive reviews. Okay. And so, and so my question is, how often do these factors change? How often do we what? I'm um, sorry, because there's some buffer on your background. Uh, am I audible right now? Yes. Yes. yes, so my question is, how often do these factors change? All right, so, All right, um, so I, I believe that um, now with the, the era that we are in right now, right, so connectivity is something that is not, uh, not uh, I would say that it's essential for us because everywhere we go, we need connectivity in terms of the Wi-Fi, especially if you are a foreigner uh, traveling to other countries where uh, you may not have a local data connection. So um, I, I would think that a Wi-Fi uh, is, is very crucial for the guests uh, to determine whether, you know, as in like providing a good Wi-Fi or with or complementary Wi-Fi will play a part um, in terms of the success of um, the, the hotels as well in terms of the overall satisfactions. And yeah, I believe um, this is the questions that you have asked, right? And I hope that I answer your questions. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. So um, do we have any other questions? Uh, you can feel free to admit yourself and we'll try to make this more interactive. Good morning, sir. My name is Sharfi and my question to you is that, uh, you know, in one of your slides you mentioned about how customers are taking more time in planning out and are looking for meaningful expend expenditure. What is the reason we are, uh, you know, this trend is coming up? Uh, maybe for this uh, Rupansh, I'll be able to answer that. Sure. So basically what is happening is that, as I mentioned in my presentation before, that people haven't traveled for the longest period of time. So there are two reasons. One is that, Number one is that they've got time to kind of figure out places where they want to travel and they've been kind of longing to travel to those places since the past two years since the pandemic is it. Number two is that they have money. I mean, they've not spent enough money for traveling over the past two years. So, I mean, yeah, so whatever was on their bucket list in terms of, you know, places like Iceland or, you know, places which are like very scenic and are beautiful. Everyone wants to travel there. 
so th- this these are the two ba- major reasons why you know people want to travel to out of the box places i hope that answers your question yes sir and one more question on trustee's application is it only limited to uh, you know hotels or um, this application is can be also adopted by homestays and all with concepts uh, of homestays that's a very good question so uh, we analyze the hotels and if happen that if you have a homestay that have a public reviews uh, we do offer the analysis as well so not only that we do also offer to restaurants like homestays uh, we do also offer to restaurants as well so uh, we do analyze all those uh, data analysis and what would be the cost of application like approx the cost wise are in, uh, it depends on individual so if you are interested in the cost um i would suggest that uh, at the end of the sessions later um we will be able to provide you an email address or our uh, rupunch um will be able to get in touch with you uh, to discuss more in details thank you sir <laughs> Good morning, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, my name is hey, uh, My name is Hashim. Now, uh, so OIM deals with a lot of data regarding guest details and like, reviews on the internet. So my question was, how does the company deal with fake reviews, which can affect the overall score of the property? Well, that's a very good question. So. Um, the sources that we work with, a uh, majority, they are uh, verified reviews, means that um, they need authentications to actually post the reviews. But a- in any point of time that whereby sometimes you will notice that there are some sources that doesn't require credentials to log in to post the reviews, you may not be able to know whether this review is actually a uh, 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 justified uh, guest that stays in a hotel or this could be someone that just out of uh, bad ill intention to, to damage the reputations. So which is why that um, the hotels actually do work very closely with the respective soft and the moment the good thing about our platform is that once you have identified the reviews especially the negative one um, the hotels can actually just reach out to the source uh, in terms of the support team in the respective source to um, ask them to appeal to bring down the reviews and in the event that if you are using the survey reviews of trust you uh, we do have our moderations where we do auto have a uh, auto moderate whereby some uh, words that um, maybe could be offensive will not be flagged up uh, and will not be reflect onto your dashboard it could be flagged for as inappropriate and the hotels can also flag these reviews to us to bring down the untruthful uh, review all right, so, so you're saying um, uh, sources where you do not need credentials in order to ref, uh, post reviews, there needs to be a manual intervention from the either hotel side or the trust use uh, software, right? Exactly, because what Trustio does is that um, we crawl in public data that are available on the public source. So if there are any untruth uh, reviews that is maybe on Google or TripAdvisor, so uh, the first approach is for the hotels will be to contact the source support team to bring down the untruthful reviews. And so that um, on Trustio end, uh, you will be updated accordingly as well. All right, sir. Now I have a small follow-up question. So now we spoke about how uh, uh, an indirect manual intervention required. Now the question is, does Trust you have a perspective on blockchain technology? Because that is a technology that is coming up to be very popular in terms of solving problems like such. In terms of untruthful reviews? Yes, sir. All right. So um, one of the functions that I shared earlier, right, in terms of uh, preventing untruthful reviews on like those uh, offensive remarks and everything, right? Uh, for the trust you survey, um, definitely we have these functions where we auto mark the reviews as inappropriate, um, which will not affect the properties uh, in terms of the data and the scores. Uh, but for online reviews, uh, um, as since this is a public review, you see, so. Um, we are at this moment we will not be able to have any like um, auto to flag up those reviews because they are all still remains in the public so we are still working very closely with our hot, uh, source partners to see whether uh, in moving ahead in the future will we have any form of way to auto detect um, those um, uh, fake reviews or untruthful reviews without having to do a, a manual intervention for that 
All right, sir. I have one uh, last question from me. So, does so a lot of properties might also have uh, their own CRM systems. Does uh, the trust you communicate with their uh, property or CRM systems? In terms of the connectivity. Yes, like is the trust your application integrated with the property uh, customer relationship management softwares? Mm -hmm. um, what we usually um, connect um, is using, um, we do actually partner with some of the CRM to actually uh, do some connectivity with um, the guest data so that uh, we can send over the, the survey, etc. So I would suggest that if you are interested to know in particular which CRM that uh, maybe we work with, or uh, we are capable to connect with, um, you can drop us an email and then we can discuss further on that. All right. Thank you so much. You're most welcome. So uh, maybe we can just um, extend one more questions on the floor. Um, is there anyone that want to ask the questions? Um, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Uh, my name is Ritika. My question is, uh, how does trust you enable long-term customer relationship management qualitatively? And uh, does that in, in any way uh, help the hotel forecast their customer lifetime value? Mm -hmm. That's a very good question. So as mentioned by my colleague Nina earlier, right? So um, we don't stop the moment the hotels are the brand signs with trust you. So we won't tell them that, oh, um, you, you sign up with us and um, the data is all yours to, 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 to formulate yourself and everything, which is why we have a very wonderful key account management uh, being there to assist the clients. And also we have a client support team to be there. And our key account management will actually go through with um, our uh, big brands, or maybe if you are a chain hotels that uh, falls under the key account management, uh, they will go through with you the business review on whether um, your properties or your brand are doing well and com uh, to do some business review in terms of the past analysis and comparing to the current analysis. So um, also, um, we do also have our marketing team that uh, release the white papers or some uh, webinars, ongoing webinars to um, educate um, the hotels and also the chain on some of the best practices and also the current trends, especially um, the APEC or maybe in other regions uh, to share with you what is the current trend so that you are well top knowledge on that. Uh, I have a follow-up question. Uh, how does this impact customer lifetime value? For the customer lifetime value, are you referring to the to to the guest or to to the hotel level? To the guest. All right. So definitely, when you know, as in like this, will greatly impact in terms of the the guest values because the moment that if the hotel uh, wants to improve themselves in terms of their standards right of course this will benefit the guest itself because if the guest or the hotel um, did not want to improve by not listening to feedback by not willing to look at the data etc so they will remain the standard as it is or even worse they will down degrade themselves on uh, the service compared to their neighbor uh, in terms of the competitors so I would say that keeping the hotels up to trend is also a way that it will directly impact the guest satisfactions and uh, on a very long run because we are always improved new hotels are always forming and um, the older hotels uh, have to catch up in terms of how they can improve the, their facilities or the services in order to uh, you know as in like catch up with the newer hotels which is why the data analysis is important to influence the guest satisfactions thank you sir you're welcome. So thank you all for all the questions being asked here. So, um, you know, it's like um, we encourage a lot of participations of your questions and we value all your questions and feedbacks. So um, I would suggest that if if you have any other questions that you may want to ask uh, at the end of this webinar, so uh, what we will do is that we will drop you an email uh, together with this recorded link so that if you have any other questions, you can also feel free to reach out to us via email and we'll be glad to answer your questions or if you are interested in to know more about products, you can also subscribe us as a demo uh, with our sales uh, representative and we'll be glad to offer you a demo or trial. Thank you, Eric. Thank you, Nina. And thank you, Nipanj. Uh, from IHMA, we would like to thank you for, uh, you know, organizing this uh, session. It was a very, very informative session and we are uh, obliged 
right uh, by trust you and your organizing team for having this webinar in association with IHB. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Um, we certainly hope that this session is very valuable and knowledgeable for every one of you here. So let's keep in touch. If you have any other questions, feel free to drop us an email and we'll be glad to answer that. Take care. Definitely. Everyone. All right. Take Thank care. You. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>